Hello and welcome to Take a Beat, where we pause a little and chat about what we talked about in service this past weekend, and then that should hopefully fuel the rest of our week and how we live our lives. So my name is Tirza, and I'm the digital pastor here at IES, and I am here with Pastor Dave Kenny. Welcome, Kitty. Hello. <laughs> I thought I was going to take a beating, so <laughs> I'm feeling much better. <laughs> no, take a beat, not take a beating. Uh, it sounds very violent. So I really, I thoroughly enjoy your sermon this past weekend. Thank you. Um, and I love that you quoted your daughter with permission. <laughs> yeah, absolutely with permission. <laughs> yeah, so the first thing first, I'm going to ask, and I've asked you this so many times, why is this important for the single people who don't have family? Well, there, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of reasons. I mean, number one, you need to know how the systems go. Mm. All right. So, so the idea that here's this kind of a, a hierarchical scheme that is, is given to us to help life work well for everybody. And then to say, oh, yeah, so I'm not married. And so, therefore, I don't have kids. And of course, an awful lot of single people have kids. So you're talking about single people who have never been married because mm -hmm. somebody who was married and, and their marriage hasn't worked out, it's very clear what they should do too. Yeah. These are all in. So you're talking about a really sub small subcategory mm -hmm. of the church. And then the idea would be that, oh, what goes on in other people's lives and families doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I, I, the best way for me to say about that, and I mean it gently, is that kind of perspective is really selfish. Mm -hmm. Because even if, you, even if you're single, you've never been married, you don't have kids, uh, you, you know, even if you'd made a decision, I'm not ever going to be married, sort of following the Paul thing. You've got family, you've got relatives who struggle with issues, you want to be able to encourage them. If you're going to be a Christian, you're going to have an influence on other people. If you say, well, I want to be a Christian, but I want to have an influence on other people. I don't want to help other people's kids. Basically selfish. You, you brought this up uh, in a conversation not too long ago, but that first line of the Rick Warren Purpose Driven Life book, it's not about you. It's not about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think also, I mean, when I was listening to your sermon, I realized too that like the conversation about love, the conversation about family values, it doesn't only apply to the family as we know it it's also like for our church family sure we have family values i mean mm -hmm. we have it in front um right be, like the video right before service starts the six family values yeah. and that is not just something that you know looks good on paper or looks good on video but it's uh, a value that we how we do life in mm -hmm. this IES family, right? Yeah, and, and not only that, you know, we just finished Genesis 8 in Soap. And in Genesis 8 is a story about how the flood ended. And then they, they ended up you know, sending out the birds. And then and then and eventually they all come out and they, they, sacri they build an altar and they sacrifice. And, you know, that's it. Uh, nobody in this church is going to go on a boat for a year uh, with animals and two of every kind of living <laughs> creature seven pairs of the clean ones so you have something to sacrifice uh the world's not going to be destroyed by a flood so it would be kind of like saying well yeah why should i read about noah because it doesn't have anything to say to me mm. actually it had enormous things to say and amazing things you know growing up in the church i've heard the story of noah all my life and the things that that people thought of that i never thought of were really fascinating and 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 so i learned a lot from reading it myself and discussing it seven different times with groups of people, I learned an awful lot. And so that'd be another reason. And I think also when we talk about family values, even if you're not currently part of a family, you were <laughs> yeah. part of a family, but also it dictates that like, you have personal values as well. And so being intentional about those, mm -hmm. and that's, that's one of the words that you brought up, right? Mm -hmm. um, order and intentionality. And being intentional with how we live our lives, um, even like on a personal basis, is very important for me to say, oh, I don't do that because that's part of my value. Mm -hmm. Or I do this intentionally because this is part of my values and mm -hmm. how I want to live my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think intentionality is, is really an important concept. 
And it's, I, I, I may actually mention this in the sermon I preach in a few hours. I was just thinking about this. I have watched people that are so intentional in different ways. Like uh, I, 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 I look at somebody and say, you know, uh, you're going to do this because this is cheaper by, you know, like 10 cents a ton. Yeah. And you're buying, you know, and they say, look, it's an issue in the business. You want to be efficient. We want to be effective. And we had a business meeting where one of our deacons, who was a new deacon, came in and looked at the paper and he said, this is too good of paper for us to use for notes. We can use much cheaper paper. And I thought, you know, to me, but, but I understood, I learned to understand that people who run businesses are intentional about being efficient and about saving money and therefore they, they save millions in their business little bits at a time. And yet in their, in their lives, they're not intentional. Yeah. So they make decisions that make no sense at all because they've never understood that they have to be intentional. Everything we do as a church, there's a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we do that somebody would say, what's the reason for that? Oh, I don't know. It's just what we've always done. We don't do that at all. Ask me an issue and I can tell you why we do it that way. Yeah. And so going back to your um, point about as a family sitting down and even having a conversation with your spouse about, okay, this is what we do. This is what we don't do. So what's one thing, uh, one family value that is, is very core to who your, like your family is. I would say, I would say that, um, uh, the, the phrase that I use is, is that our lives are for the gospel is really a key phrase for all of us. Mm. We always understood that the things that we do, that's the focus and that's the reason, the letting people hear about the gospel. And and we we allow that to be the first priority. Um, sometimes, and you know, look, I'm far from a perfect father. And, and for my daughter, since we talked about my daughter, for my daughter growing up as a, uh, as a preacher's kid, you know, that's very complicated. But uh, one time I was, several times I would say to her, okay, this is our plan, and this is what we will do. And she'd say, well, we really do it. And I would say, well, you know that everything that we do is dependent on certain things. If someone dies, we have to go to the funeral. Yeah. If somebody's in the hospital and it's an emergency, we have to go. So mm -hmm. if we plan this, and then we have to be at the hospital at the same time, we all know that being the pastors, the work that we do for the gospel, that's the highest priority. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that we take things out of our life that, you know, we don't do things together and all those kind of things. So, you know, so that's, that, that would say I would fit. Yeah. I think when I, when I was sitting and, and thinking about what family values are, uh, in my family, that's probably one of the biggest things, like serving, serving the Lord. That's, uh, both my parents, mm -hmm. everything, even, even our vacations were scheduled in such, such a way that um, my parents would still be able to minister or mm -hmm. even if people <laughs> during our vacations, which like I got used to this, if they want to, like I, I think this one time we were in Europe, but then like a friend of a friend asked, uh, like there was like a death in the family or whatever. And so asked my parents to be there. They did. Yeah. Even when we were on vacation, we were in Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, so I think, like, I think you said this, train by example, because it's not just telling, oh, this is who we are, this is what we do, yeah. but actually um, living it out and saying, okay, this is how, this is how we are going to live yeah. our life. This is how we are going to order our family. Yeah. And the other one was money. My dad had this one thing about, we, you do not borrow money from other people yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he was very very meticulous about how we uh, take care of money yeah oh yeah oh yeah i could tell a lot of stories about that <laughs> so. yeah um so what was my oh yeah family values um and so how how did you and Gigi talk about family values and how you might um like do things with Isabel or with each other. Did you did you sit and talk about it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And 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 from the very beginning, uh, even when we were just planning to get married, we wanted to talk about what kind of home we would have. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, family values is a part of it. We didn't have the language yet. Mm -hmm. We actually learned that here in Indonesia at an amazing pastoral seminar, pastor for seminars, seminar for pastors that we went to. But we talked about, you know, how do we, how are we going to do vacations? How do those kind of things work out? So we talked about an awful lot, beginning from the time we decided to get married up, up until the time we were married. And by the time Isabel came along, we hadn't had a lot of conversation about what we would and wouldn't do as a family and how those things would fit together. And some of those conversations were pretty intense. So these values are intentional. It's not just Absolutely. like, oh, we'll just pick it up as we go. Or, uh, I mean, I think the phrase that people talk about a lot these days is, oh, we just want things to, to come by organically. Well, you know, and that's that's not a bad thing. But, you know, um, there's, there's ways. I mean, if you've ever seen like a, a place where plants are grown to produce things. Uh, my, my family history on my dad's side goes back nine generations of people who worked with with plants that produce food, so mm -hmm. plant husbandry and, and uh, things like that. And there's ways that you work with those plants and, in, and you work with those plants to get them to be more productive. So setting boundaries and being intentional. You know, if you have apple trees that are wild, uh, yeah, I understand some of the modern interest in permaculture and stuff like that. But if you trim them right, they, they produce better fruit. I heard a great quote the other day, and it, it has to do with the line of, of um, uh, Jesus talks about being the true vine, and he said, my father is the, the husbandman who prunes the vines. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to remember that God doesn't prune you to make you smaller. He prunes you to make you more effective, to bear better fruit. And that's not, that's not, the fruit is not just a number that you come up with how many people you influence. It's he wants you to be one. So. Yeah, absolutely. So you also talked about training your kids by example and training your kids by instruction. And so how how did you do that with your own family? Oh man. Well we were just conscious of it. We you know, as as you know, you've heard the story. Uh, we decided that people in ministry it's really hard to know when you're gonna have family time. Mm -hmm. So we decided our family time was in the morning. And we woke up at five o'clock every morning. And we had an hour plus for breakfast. And uh, later on, it became necessary for Isabel when she would go to school. But it, it was that pattern from the time she was a baby. Mm -hmm. And in that family breakfast time, we talked about all kinds of things. And we took other opportunities. You know, you have a lot of teaching moments in life. Yeah. Watch a show together on TV. And, and then you can say, what do you think about that decision? What do you think they did that? You know, stuff like that. We were very intentional about it. But it wasn't like, you know first 15 minutes of uh, of the morning we're going to get you're going to get grilled we're going to read <laughs> proverbs and make you memorize them something like that yeah i mean just looking back at my own life growing up and i realized i have uh, i had great parents mm -hmm. and they're not perfect by any chance but uh, they were godly yeah and you so did have great parents <laughs> and they cared amazingly about you um, and I, I always remember on Saturdays, because um, Sunday was very much work day, uh, ministry day. So Saturdays were the day where we would go to lunch, bookstore, and grocery shop. Saturday mornings. Mm. Um, and I think, I mean, when, when you were talking about that, um, I think one of the things that kind of just stuck in my mind is that you know going back to your priority needs to be your relationship with god first yeah. and so how do you instruct someone if you don't even have a relationship with, absolutely. with god absolutely absolutely and so it's sort of out of the overflow of your relationship with god you train your kids in that way and that and that also fits in the the, the relationship with the spouse being the next priority mm -hmm. it, you know obviously i have enormous respect for people who are in bad and broken marriages that they try their best to raise their kids but um, it's always better to raise kids in it with a healthy family relationship and so if you're if you're in alignment with God and you're in alignment with your spouse and nobody's perfect in this but that's the goal mm -hmm. then your kids are going to be raised in such a way that they can understand what are important and what aren't important and things like that and you brought this up in uh previous sermon and this is something that I, I had lunch this week and we talked about this 
Like, uh, you gave some statistics about when the dad goes oh, to man. church and when the dad has a, a good relationship with the Lord, the kids would end up going to to yeah. church. And I think, I mean, even I was talking to um, this parent of teen, and well, they're her kids. Most of them are no, no longer teens, but we 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 think about it and we talked about it. It's actually really really true. Oh, it's absolutely. There were a true. lot of our friends or family members who the kids no longer go to mm-hmm. church because the dad never went to church. Yeah, that's right. That's one of the most difficult things we face as a church is that for the most part, uh, the dads don't have that much influence with their children. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the kids that go to IES, IES kids, their dad doesn't really go to church. In fact, we have we have a lot where neither parent goes. Mm-hmm. And, and we're fine with that. We do our best. But if the dad doesn't go to church, what? That, that statistic I had was like 2%. Yeah. And interestingly enough, and, and not fair, but it's just the way the reality of the world we live in, if the dad goes to church on a regular basis, it doesn't matter what the mom does. Yeah. If the dad goes to church, the kids will, even if the mom doesn't. Yeah. And that's I think, that, I think that speaks to the general lack of participation by fathers, yeah. that, that to have one that cares and influences that way, it really stands out. So, yeah, and that kind of translates to what you were saying. I've underlined it and actually put a little star um, on it. Love is action in others' best interest mm. and a commitment to keep doing that. And a lot of the times I, I've spoken to parents um, and I've spoken to their kids or, or things like that. And this idea of best interest is always a, an, an interesting conversation yeah. because with some parents, they're like, okay, the the kid's best interest is, I don't know, fill in the blank. Like, oh, you need to go to this university or my alma mater. Yeah, yeah. Um, or you need to take this major. Or like, so what <laughs> What are your thoughts about that? Oh, yeah. Um, man, the whole issue of legacy and, and that which ties in together with discipline. Actually, uh, I was going to do this lesson. Uh, covering dealing with children and grandparents and I got as far as I did it's a little bit long this mm-hmm. week I got as far as I did and there's ton and ton of stuff left so I'm going to do another session mm-hmm. just on legacy and discipline yeah. um, most parents don't love their kids in the way that love is intended to be mm-hmm. pa- children give you an enormous amount of, of, of um, pleasure and joy but you don't you don't get to just seek your own pleasure and joy you know when your kid throws a temper tantrum at first it's kind of cute but it's not going to be cute you know i always i always use the there's a tagalog word maate and the tagalog word what i always define is what's cute in a three-year-old that's not cute in an 18 year old Mm -hmm. and and that's that whole thing and so parents that don't discipline their kid don't want to or they don't know to or they don't want to because they they just can't be bothered or they don't want to have the potential of of conflict but then they're just condemning themselves to be in conflict the whole adult life of their kids it's really 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 sad and a lot of parents don't really even know how to do it yeah yeah absolutely and i think that idea of having the other person's best interest and a commitment to keep doing it. It's mm. not just a one-time thing. Oh, I have their be- best interest when they were three, mm-hmm. but then they're fun when they're three. <laughs> yeah, but then don't have their best interest when they're fifteen, yeah. for example, yeah. or twenty-five, thirty-five. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about: the issue of of Christian adults who have parents that need to be related to, and that's one of the things that's important for us to understand is that parents, Christian parents who are older, who have adult children, also are still required to love those kids with their best interest at heart. Yeah. Uh, it may be more of a one-way street if the adult parents are not believers, mm. but you still are required to love them whether they love you back or not. And I, I just really think that we need to start um, getting the word out and redefining love because people talk about love all the time people talk about it in i love it when people talk about (laughs) it in you know different aspects and we see that in the things we watch like Mm -hmm. k-dramas or things like Mm -hmm. that but actually thinking about love as 
and not merely a feeling. Feelings are part of it. Yeah. Uh, that's one way we know things. Uh, but it's action in others' best interest and a commitment to keep doing that. Yeah. And I think just um, how would us as Christians, how would our lives be different if we redefine all of our loves yeah. in that way? Yeah, that's true. I'll never redefine my love for pizza, but no, <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I commit to eat pizza always. So. I'm assuming with pineapples on. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, only that's just a thing. You guys <laughs> missed the whole point. Pineapple is only a condiment on a Canadian bacon and pineapple pizza. It's not a universal condiment, and so that that's the issue. It has its place in time. Yeah, I will, I will choose to not order the Canadian mm-hmm. bacon and pineapple pizza. Then you're choosing not to be with me. <laughs> well, like Isabel said, you know, we have to, to understand how to differ in opinions. That's right. Well, thank you so much, PD, for Great. chatting with me about this. And, I, and I'm just looking forward to talking more about this because this is a huge topic, mm-hmm. I feel like, and we'll definitely talk about this some more in in future podcast conversations Absolutely. and even in the sermon and our soap groups and life groups and things like that. And so I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you so much for joining us this week. And if you missed out on the sermon, go to our YouTube channel, IES Church, and look it up. It's great. You don't want to miss it. And tune in next week for Take a Beat.